Don't you bite my ear? <laughs> oh gosh! No, don't bite my ear! Ow! We're doing a little bit of practice. We have never put her really seriously on a track. We've, you know, let her play around in the yard oh, quite a bit, oh, but hi, hi. we better get this thing started because she's ready to go. Yeah. All right, from here on out, I'm leaving it up to them. What is it, Bear? What are you doing this morning? Hmm? Well, what's up, guys? It's Daniel and Bear from Arms Family Homestead, and I've got something really cool I want to show you guys today. Like, something I haven't seen but maybe once or twice in my life. Can you believe that, Bear? So it's not Bear, obviously. We see him every day. Bear's a good boy, aren't you? He's a good dog. Yeah. Uh, but before I show you, <laughs> but wait. <laughs> no, in, in all uh, seriousness, I just wanted to stop and say thank you guys so much for supporting cameraman Ron, all of his family. Um, I know we're going to tremendously appreciate everything you guys have done to help them out. Uh, as of today, right now, which is Friday, December 1st, we are over 1,000 orders on the Cameraman Memorial Team Cameraman t-shirt. So that counts um, the t-shirts and the donations. There's, I, I, I can't take credit for the idea of putting that donation box on that website. The lady that helped us set that, uh, that landing page up, um, that was her idea. And I will say, it's not quite a 50-50, but so many of you guys have donated to help their family. Uh, it's almost a 50-50 split on how many people actually bought a t-shirt versus just a donation. And the number of you that have done both, it just, it's mind-blowing. And I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you for helping this family. They're, they're going to need all the love and support that we can all give them. And this is going to, this is going to help change their life, I feel like. But one thing I forgot to mention on the video the other day when I was talking about Ron was... I don't know how I completely forgot. I guess emotions take over when you're sitting there crying to a camera. You forget to say things. But a good friend of Ron's in Destin, Florida, has a charter service. And he called, oh, before we ever launched, way before we ever launched the t-shirt thing, and wanted to do like a raffle or a, some sort of donation, some sort of auction giveaway for a chartered fishing trip. He owns a charter service, and he um, wanted to raise some money for Ron. This was before Ron passed away. He was just trying to do it as a fundraiser. And I said, well, I don't really know how to do an online raffle. Raffle? Can't say the other R word. I don't really know how to do an online raffle to make it fair and legal and all of that. And I really didn't want to try to figure out, I'm going to do an auction. So I said, why don't we do this? For every person that makes a purchase, that buys a t-shirt or makes a donation, is entered into a random drawing. And one person's going to win a six-hour a six hour chartered fishing trip in Destin, Florida with Badlands Charter Service. He was like, man, I'm on board with that. And he said, <laughs> this is a six hour trip. He said, if you guys reach $20,000, I'll do a, an extra four hour trip. Well, I haven't talked to him. <laughs> well, let's just say we've surpassed that a couple times. And so we're up to two charter fishing trips. And uh, so everyone that's either made a purchase, made a donation, whatever, is going to be entered into a random drawing. We're going to pick a couple people to go down to Destin, Florida. We're not paying for the trip. The, the charter service is paid for. So the travel and lodging and all that's going to be on you. But it is, uh, it is a pretty cool deal. You get to go out and do some, uh, some saltwater fishing with a charter service. So anyways, I forgot to mention that the other day. On to today's video and what I was saying. I've got something really cool, really exciting. So yesterday evening, <laughs> I walked into the shop and my wife was like, hey, you need to go up to the garage and get rid of that critter that's laying in the floor. She said, it's some sort of strange looking critter that I've never seen before. It could be, uh, I, she goes, I don't really know what it is. Well, it's a flying squirrel. It was dead. And I think Trashy, our kitty cat, caught it and took it in the garage. I've only ever seen one flying squirrel here when I was a kid, um, and it was dead, and actually a cat brought it up, I've seen one flying squirrel alive in my lifetime. 
and it was about an hour from here we were fishing on a lake that's got a lot of standing dead timber and we saw one jump out of a pine tree and float down and land in another pine tree it was the coolest thing ever so let me show you this thing now it is dead so there's that it's kind of unfortunate but i i figure a lot of people have probably never seen a flying squirrel you know other than pictures or something but isn't this cool it's got one injury on its leg right here but i'm guessing it either fell out of a tree and was injured or maybe the cat found it at night i don't know but look at this isn't that the neatest thing and uh in case you were wondering is this a is this a male or a female um it it leaves no room for doubt um <laughs> it's definitely a boy he was very uh <clears throat> blessed let's say that but look at these i don't know what you call them wings but it's just really thin skin and those guys just they don't necessarily actually fly they just glide through the air so they go up high in a tree and jump and put those wings out those flaps of skin right here and just just kind of float down and they're like a um, i would say they look like a rat and a bat combined together not really a squirrel and they're very small like i don't know that this is fully grown but from the ones that i've seen and research i've done they don't really tend to get a lot bigger than that but i think it's pretty cool it's pretty neat it's unfortunate that it's that it's not alive and that something killed it and the cat found it or the cat killed it and drug it up it is kind of unfortunate but my thoughts are where there's one there's got to be more huh bear have you ever seen one of these you ever seen one before? Yeah, oh, he's in there. You're not gonna, it's not a treat. You're not gonna get to eat it, no. But, isn't that pretty neat? I have, I don't know that I've ever actually held a flying squirrel, but he's a guy and he was well blessed for a while, but pretty neat. Interesting looking little creature, isn't it? Okay, now I need to go wash my hands because <laughs> it's, it's been dead for a day or two and I may have put it in our refrigerator in the garage. Yeah, don't tell mom, okay? Yeah, I, 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 I did pick it up out of the garage floor like she asked me to. I just <laughs> might have put it in the refrigerator. Uh, I've got a friend that's a game warden and I sent him a video and I was just curious. I thought maybe somebody might be interested in and having it for a, you know, a sample or, you know, I don't, I don't know if you could do taxidermy on a flying squirrel, but I thought maybe somebody might want to see it. I guess nobody really wanted to, so I showed you guys and I had it in the refrigerator for a day or so. <laughs> uh, nobody knows. No, she, she never saw it. It's okay. I thought my wife was down here in the shop working, but it appears she is not here yet. She must still be in the house. So um, more on this in a minute. But as you see, there's a there's about 3,000 pounds of pecans laying over there and a whole bunch of other stuff. We'll have to check on that later when she's here because I want her to talk about it. What's up, turkle birds? Huh? Just out strutting your stuff, showing off. Oh, Phoebe. Hey, I'm gonna get a little bucket of feed and come in there because I want to show everybody something. We, we've been working on something, fowling, haven't we? Charlie! What's up, buddy? You're getting big, man. Barry, you coming in here? You coming in? Come on. Okay. Hello, Phoebe. What's up, Larry? Hey, Larry. Can you give me nothing? Come on. Can you give me knuckles? No knuckles today? Goose? You just gonna stay back there and hide behind Larry? Like, you think you're tough, but you're not, are you? Yeah, you're like that little guy that hides behind his big buddy. Oh, mercy. Oh. So, those three are annoying. Huh. No surprise there, right? Uh, I need to put out a bale of hay for uh the animals today they uh have completely destroyed that bale i've been pulling off of a bale of hay 
over in the donkey pen and throwing hay over the fence for a couple days. It did rain most of the day yesterday, so I was going to do it then. But uh, Pepper's been making a a nice a nice little bed out of the hay pile. Anyways, on to the subject, subject of those uh, three big white geese over there. I had a friend text me a couple days ago and say, Hey, uh, I was watching your video and I noticed you got some geese. Any chance you'd be willing to uh, sell one of those geese? Because I need a, a goose to uh, put with my chickens. I lost my, my old goose died or something. I don't remember what she said. But um, she said, I need a new guardian goose to put with my flock. You girls. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. You girls are something else. Anyways, I said, I don't only have, I said, I don't only have one. Oh, this is a terrible idea. I have three. Would you be interested? Because I have three perfect candidates for the job. And she was like, yeah, I'll take them. So I may have found a new home for those three geese because it's, they're a lot. They're a lot, aren't they, Charlie? Huh? Everyone saw a short video of Charlie the other day and they were like, I can't believe how big he's gotten. He's he, she, I'm not sure, is huge. Ouch! That hurt. Anyways, the reason I got this bucket of feed wasn't to sit out here and talk about the geese. We've been working on somebody else. Fallon, not you. I'm not talking about you. Hey, Freedom. Listen, I can't sit on the bucket. They won't let me. I've been hand feeding Freedom, and look who's getting closer. Look, 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 look. Hey, Bree. We're working on Bree. You want to smell my hand? Hey, quit shaking the camera. Look, guys. You see that? Bree is not eating out of my hand, but she's smelling of my fingers. She's coming closer. Which is a huge improvement, and it starts by... Not you, Phoebe. That's not how it starts. You're just in the way. It starts, oh, there she is. It starts with her mama right here, freedom. But getting all these other donkeys up close to me and hand feeding everybody tells Bree that I'm not that scary, I'm not that bad. Ain't that right, Fallon, or Farah, or Phoebe? Farah, Fallon, Farah, Phoebe, Fallon. Pain in the butt. Literally, ow, don't, don't you bite my fat roll, that hurts. That hurts. Dude, you're something else, man. I'm having a difficult time getting to Bree when I have this problem. There she is. Fallon, you let her come up here. Yep. She wants to. She wants to so bad. Here. Quit punking on me. Quit punking on me. You're shaking the camera. You're shaking me. Trying to knock me off the bucket. And I'm only here so I can touch Bree. Whoa. I touched her. I touched her. I touched Bree. I touched the butt. <laughs> I see you. I see you. I see you too, buddy. Keep your distance. Oh, ready? Ooh. Touched her on the butt. I touched her on the butt. She doesn't know it, but we're going to be friends someday. Huh. Look at her. She keeps turning her butt to me. I'm not real sure why I thought this would work. Me sitting out here on a bucket with all these pestering animals around. Sounded like a good idea. Until you get out here and they just don't give you any space. No, they don't give you any space at all. But I wouldn't change them for the world. I wouldn't. <laughs> hey, let go of my string. <laughs> you can't have my string. Oh my gosh. Dude. Oh. These animals don't know the meaning of personal space. Hey, you can't bite the button off my pants. That's, that's a big no-no. Ouch. Hey! <laughs> this would stress my wife smooth out. Here, I got you now. Sit down. Act right, dude. Sit down.
Sit down and act right. Yeah. I can't get freedom to come back over here when you guys are doing all this. So, as you can see, we are making a little progress with Miss Bree. She's not near as timid and wild as she was in the other pasture because, well, just quite honestly, I can come down here multiple times a day a lot easier, get a bucket of feed. I'm not real sure why I feel like I think I can set on a bucket of feed, but move, move, move. I can at least hand feed everybody. Hey, get off my shoulder. Don't you bite my ear. <laughs> oh, gosh. No, don't bite my ear. Ow. No, you're not biting my ear. Ouch. Charlie. Oh, Charlie bit me. <laughs> that hurt. Am I bleeding? Oh. It's the first time. First time Charlie's ever bit my ear. Ouch. <laughs> You turkey? <laughs> There's a turkey right there. Hey. Uh-uh. You can't bite my fingers. Gosh. Okay. 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 I hear you. Oh, my goodness. All right. On to the next thing. Well, would you look at that? Hmm. Hang on. Got to clean the poop off my boots before I go in. The merchandise building. Nobody wants that on their packages, do they? Hmm. Must be nice. Eleven twenty-five, and you're just showing up for work today. Perk. That's a perk, huh? So uh, I guess today's video is sponsored by uh, <clears throat> DJ's Merch and Pecan Company. Um, no. No, no, it's not. It's not. Nope. Sponsored by. Dan's nuts. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Look, we match. Uh, listen, yeah, green. I love green. Mm -hmm. uh, I know. thought, my ear's bleeding, by the way. Yeah. Um, I thought that was a joke when DJ said she was going to make a t shirt. Um, <laughs> I thought it was a joke. She yeah. actually had them printed, and then uh, Kent, <laughs> Grow Jack's dad, texted me the other day, and he was like, it's going to be real interesting when we make it to the Oki Homestead Conference this year, coming up, which I think it's in March this year, mm -hmm. or next year. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be real funny when 20 ladies show up wearing a t-shirt saying, <laughs> Dan's nuts. Dan's nuts. I'll be one of them. Anyways, actually, so Dan's nuts is not a sponsor of today's video. <laughs> However, we did get, and we are fully stocked with 3,000 pounds of pecans. Yeah. So our email has been uh, um, slightly busy slightly. with with requests for more pecans, right? Yes. We have. Pecans. It's been in the plan to get more pecans since we sold out. We just didn't expect to sell out in two hours. That's right. So we have 3,000 more pounds. We sold 2,500 pounds in two hours last time, guys, in one-pound bags. They're delicious. They're amazing. They're awesome. They taste great. DJ loves putting... <clears throat> Don't do it. Fight it. DJ loves putting them in her mouth. Pecans. The pecans are delicious. <laughs> she loves it so much that she made a shirt. That's right. But that's not all. That's, that's not all. But wait, oh. there's more. Uh, we sold out of so many things in so many things. a few hours. Yes. So you've ordered more supplies, more stuff. Of and I want to say something really quick. Okay. Um, I know, I know it's easy to dwell on the haters and I'm not, I'm not trying to dwell on the haters, but I had a comment the other day that said, this channel's turned into nothing but merchandise and chasing the almighty dollar. Well, everybody's entitled to make a living, but the merchandise side of things, listen guys, we wouldn't be selling this and these hats and these pecans and all, we wouldn't be selling the things if there wasn't a demand, if the audience didn't want them. So if we launched and we had a thousand t-shirts to sell and we sold a hundred, guess what? We wouldn't be selling t-shirts anymore. Keep doing this. So when we, we only do four launches a year. That's it. We do spring, summer, fall, winter, or Christmas. That right now, that's all we do, unless there's something special like the Bella t-shirt. I mean, that's different. But we try not to do too much. But when it's like Christmas time and the launch is going on, <coughs> we have to promote it ahead of time to let you guys know what we're doing. Then the launch happens, and then we video the whole process. Like, 
it's just fun. That's what we do. Yep. And I know 99% of you appreciate that. And we thank you from the bottom of our hearts because you have helped change our life tremendously. And we're gracious and thankful that we're able to work from home. Yes. And be at all of our kids' events and miss, not miss the things that I missed for 14 years as a state trooper working a rotating schedule. So thank you for that. But since you guys have uh, sent us about 500 emails over the last couple of weeks, um, we'll show you everything that DJ has restocked and some, some slight variations and changes. Yes. Okay. Back to you, Vanna. Back to me. So I got more of these in, restocked. Coffee cup. Coffee cup. Do your best coffee cup. I could not get the white again, but I got the black with the white. So I think I like black better. I know. I didn't, yeah. that's the first time I've seen one of those. Hang on. I grabbed one of these. These are still, these were sold out, but we keep a few extra in case, in case DJ messes up an order. Yeah. We keep a few extra of everything. Take that out of the bag. Cause I really think I like the black better. You know what they say? I can't say it either. Nope. You can't say it either. Once you go black, you never go back. You didn't stay away. I didn't. I couldn't. It's, <laughs> I, oh, it's white on the inside. Yeah. That's cool. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. No, I do like the black though. Oh, guys. Yes. Huh. Well. So we are out of these, unfortunately. I could not reorder these, but I like the black. Looks good. And that's so. not all that you got in black. That is not. I have another cup in black. Uh, here it is. Arctic. Uh, I bet you turn it where I can read it. There oh, you sorry. go. I thought it was. Sorry. Uh, nice little bell buckle logo that we like so much. Um, I tried putting it on a camo. They did have a camo cup and you just could not see it. Yeah, that was the big debate on the live stream when we yeah. launched. Everybody wanted to say, hey, why don't you do a camo cup? And we yeah. couldn't. No, we couldn't. It just, I mean, we could. It was just washed out. Yeah, you just couldn't see it. And I didn't want to give something out that, you know. Well, if you're buying a customized cup, yeah. that's what it's about and not necessarily the camo color. So Right. Yeah. So, these are in also. Also, there's more. There's more. Um, on the, um, the ones with the handle, uh, we called those, what do we call those? Uh, road trip tumbler is what we called those. Um, those sold like crazy. I tried to order more in the green. They were out. So I got white this time. They are not here yet. They're supposed to be here early next week. So I'm going to go ahead and list them like they're here. And if you purchase one, that order just won't get filled until they get in. So as long as you're okay with a, a delayed um, order. Listen, if it's like it was last time and we have 2,000 orders, there's going to be a few days delay anyways. Yeah. So unless you're like one of the first 200 to order, they're not going to get shipped and packaged or packaged and shipped until later in the week anyways. Right. It just takes time. Yeah. So. But I will say this. I will say this. Hang on. On our first launch with 2,500 pounds pecans and I don't know how many shirts and hats and things. We were at about uh, 25, 2,600 orders, something like that. DJ's work crew, which I was mostly a, a box builder and the post office runner. Mm -hmm. they, they could fill up a pickup truck faster than you could think. Um, but she had several people out here helping her. And then Houston and I snuck away. We were gone. We were in Alabama and Mississippi for, for like a couple days. couple? Yeah, for a couple days. It was like five days. Well, I know, but you finished on Friday. That's true. She, so we started on Monday and filled that all of those orders were done by lunchtime on Friday. Yes. And she had some family out here helping and some friends out here helping. And oh, it was amazing. It was it awesome. Was. So it does take a little bit of time because we're not Amazon. That's right. <laughs> we are not Amazon. I mean, I feel like we're pretty fast, but I'm not that fast. Yeah. But if we can fill 3,000, well, 2,500 orders in five days. I, I'm not mad about that. Yeah, no. I, I don't think anybody has a right to complain because no. we're just doing it from home. I know our legs were very, very sore. <laughs> <laughs> we were super tired. <laughs> yeah, you started your, your uh, watch. Yeah, you did like I a did. workout, like a walk. I did. And before lunch one day, it was at like three miles. Yes. And then after lunch, it was another two and a half or something. Yeah, so. just walking in here and yeah. getting the order. Just in the shop. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so. on to what else you ordered. Dan's shirt. Dan's nuts shirt. We got all those. We restocked the uh, Christmas tea, the MU Charlie tea. The Charlie Christmas tea. Yes. Sort of on accident, but nonetheless, they're here. Yeah. We have a bunch of those. Um, she meant to order a different 
Christmas shirt and there was a little confusion in the process. But everyone loved my Do Your Best sweatshirts with the tie on the side. So I reordered those. I could not get more red in, at least in all the sizes. So I went with navy blue this time. So if you got a red one the first time, come back for a blue one <laughs> <laughs> because they're super pretty. And everybody loves those. Um, what else? Anything else? I think that's all that I restocked. Pretty sure. Uh, no, one more thing. One more thing. One more thing. But wait, there's more. There's more. I ordered more blankets. Yeah, those sold out in like fast. minutes, it yeah, seemed like. Super fast. So we have more blankets. Anything else? I have to look around. Um, those deer heads on the wall are a distraction. Are they? Yeah. Such a guy. Okay. Um, so as you can see, we're fully restocked. Everything is on the website as of the time of this video being posted. It goes out on YouTube at 4.30 on Saturday. It's going to go out on Facebook the next day. I'll make social media posts, all that stuff. Can't guarantee how long the pecans are going to last. Um, there's just only so much we can get in at a time. And uh, like I said, we are partnering with a, a local pecan farm, the Buchanan family. So the way all this works, just in case you're, in case you don't know, um, we have to buy these pecans. <laughs> yes, we do pay for them, we, we but buy we're them. Not free. So we have a lot of money invested right here. So yes, I mean, I'm sure some people will be like, well, you sold 2,500 pounds in two hours and you only bought 3,000. So those are probably selling three hours. Well, there's a lot of risk there. When there you're is. putting 3,000 pounds of pecans sitting here that we hope to sell, there's only so much we're like, Ugh, yeah, we could probably get five, six, seven thousand 7,000 pounds in here. I just don't know if the market can handle that much. Right. I don't know if I can handle that. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> uh, we, we do make a profit. I don't want to confuse anybody. We make a profit on the pecans, but we have to buy them up front. So it's kind of one of those, how big of a risk are you willing to take? And uh, you guys blew our socks off the first time. So we bought more because our inbox and our email can't handle the pressure <laughs> of not having pecans. So I can't either. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's been it it's been great. It's been overwhelming, yes. but the response has been uh, amazing. It's just a lot of work, and uh, no complaints. We love it. It's what we asked for. Yep. Um, Ron, it's this is what's funny. Cameraman Ron used to tell me all the time, uh, you know, this is the life we prayed for, right? Because we, you know, you have those days where you're like, ah, I just can't make a good video. I didn't catch any fish or we didn't kill a deer or whatever. And I'd be complaining to Ron and he would say, you know, this is the life you prayed for, right? I'm like, shoot. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you're right. You're right. You're right. So it's amazing. Anyways, Thanks. back to work. Girls looking for a fresh bale of hay. Hey, girls. That's what I got. Look at Charlie go. You gonna run for us? What? You wanna race? I'll run you. Let's go. Yeah, you might win. Yeah, you better run. That's what I thought. Bro, you better run scared of me. That's what it is. That guy keeps messing with me. I'll bite his ear off. I don't think Charlie has an ear, but he tried to bite mine off, so an ear for an ear, right? Now the question is, is Charlie going to let me get through this gate? Usually, he's standing here, standing guard. And I can't get the tractor in without some assistance. So maybe he's distracted long enough. There you 
supervising today? Ah, made it. Look at him. Here he comes. Yeah, he's like, yeah, I know what you're doing. I gotta shut the gate. I think I'm gonna put this bale up under the barn instead of out here in the open. Pepper, you just keep your seat, okay? Don't mind me. Anyways, I think I'm gonna set this one up under there so we can peel some of, some of it off and use, you know, for bedding and uh, it'll stay dry under there. I'm not gonna put it in a, in a bale feeder because, well, the donkeys don't seem to make too big of a mess of it. I like the goats do, so. We gotta move that feeder, cut the strings off, and we'll just set it under the barn. Why, Phoebe? Why do you do that? Everybody's curious. Curious about the new bale of hay. So what I'll do is I'll come in here and this that's been exposed to the weather, the rain and stuff, we'll just peel it down like so. Have some some on the ground, which is just fine in here because it's a, a dirt floor. I clean it out a few times a year. But uh, as it gets colder, we'll have like a deep litter layer of bedding in here for all the all the donkeys and alpacas. Not that the alpacas care, because when it's raining and snowing, they just stand out in it. But, uh, yeah. All right, ladies. Look, there's Bree. Can we sneak up on her? Nope, nope, she went out. All right, y'all enjoy your new bale of hay. All righty, got a new bale of hay put out for the donkeys. Uh, the goats still have their bale, they're fine. Steve's still got a bale, Steve and Fancy up there. But anyways, I have one other thing I wanna show you guys today. I actually filmed it a couple days ago. Uh, Houston and I have been working with Gemma a lot lately on uh, the deer tracking front and working on a few different things and trying to teach her an actual system and uh, it's going pretty well. Watch this. All right, guys, we're out this evening. Um, it's about uh, four o'clock or so. At about noon today, I came out and I drug part of a deer hide around a deer that uh, Emily shot several days ago. I drug it off through the woods, made a trail, and uh, we've been working with Gemma on tracking deer a little bit. Houston wants a tracking dog. I said, we've already got one. Why do we need another tracking dog? But Gemma's never really had any formal deer tracking training, but we've been working with her in the yard, and as you can see, as you can see, she's got quite a prey drive. So uh, we're 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 doing a little bit of practice. We've never put her really seriously on a track. We've you know let her play around in the yard quite a bit, but we better get this thing started because she's ready to go. Yeah. Where's that deer, Gemma? Find the deer. Find the deer. Where's it at? All right, Houston. I told you. I told you as as the uh, the hunter, I'm pretending I'm the hunter and Houston's the deer tracker. And I told him when I shot this deer, which I didn't shoot it obviously, but it was over here around this clump of trees. And when I shot, she took off and ran into the woods, but I couldn't find any blood. That's our scenario. Uh-oh, Houston's lost his dog. You better run. Apparently a 30-foot lead wasn't long enough. Bring her back. 
back over here. You need to restart. I mean, she's a kill dog. Don't give me, I mean, don't let this little pink harness on this little long-haired weenie dog trick you because this dog is ferocious. These little miniature dachshunds were bred years ago to hunt badgers, to go down in a hole and catch a badger and dig it out. I don't know if you've never seen a badger, but they're not nice. They're a mean looking creature. So if we can get him back over here, I can kind of see the trail where I drug the little deer hide, but if we can get him in the right area and get her started, she's she'll be on it i promise well it's a good thing we started off on the lead huh yeah. so legally in oklahoma if you're tracking deer with a dog it's supposed to be on a lead so where's it at find the deer get on the trail Gemma. Uh oh she smells something she smells it yep right there's where i started oh yeah Got to take care of business first, huh? Get on the track, Gemma. That the right way? She's on the trail. That, you got to learn to hold on to that lead. The lead is really thin enough. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Mr. Here, Mr. Tracker Dog, track dog guy. That's not the way my deer went. You're close. She was on the trail. She was on the trail, she's on the trail, and then she got distracted. Gemma, come on, find that deer. Listen, we're learning. We're practicing. All she's really done in the yard and around the house is very fresh tracks. So we'll go drag it. And as soon as we drag it, we put her on it. She can smell it. I can tell she's, she's on the, the trail right now. She can smell where it's... Oh, she's too excited. We got to take care of business. Get all of our business taken care of, and then we'll start, start tracking, hey, okay? That's, that's exactly what, what the dog did whenever... Uh, that's pretty much what every dog does when yeah. you first turn them out. What is she doing? Go to the bathroom. All right. She's on the trail. Don't let go of that rope. Right. <laughs> you already did twice. She's we right on the trail. We don't, we don't talk about that. So what Gemma doesn't know is I went up into the timber probably 100 yards, made a loop. Hey, she can hear you. Came back around, came down, and it's actually over there. But they're on the trail. She's on it. Doing good. Yeah. Find that deer, Jimbo. Find that deer. All right. Been in the timber for quite a ways. Gave her all kinds of different terrain. There's a Hi, ditch Jim. she had to cross, some tall grass. Her handler's having a hard time keeping up with her. Out of my pants, lady. What? No. Nah. You said you wanted to learn how to track deer. No, I know. Okay. Okay. It's part of tracking deer, then. Where's it at, Gemma? Find it, Gemma. Where's that? Gemma. I don't think you went in that hole. Better keep going. Keep tracking. All right, from here on out, I'm leaving it up to them. I'm not going to give them any hints, no clues, but I don't think I got to worry about it because deer hanging in that tree down there. Part of it, anyways. She's definitely on the trail. She's close. It's 
actually right there. You guys see? It? She overshot it. Well, she came really, really close. Jimmo walked, made a trail right through here, right through those trees, and just kept going. But she missed the deer by about 30 feet. So she's over there stuck in a ditch. Houston's trying to get her back this way. She's wanting to continue going that direction, but the deer, I, I never took it that way. I only tracked, I mean, I only drug it right through here and put it right there. She's close, but we're gonna make her find it. All right, we had to bring her back and let her reset. I think she just found it. <laughs> deer aren't supposed to be in trees. She's trying to, yeah. she knows it's up there. Yeah. Gemma, good girl. Gemma, where's it at? Where's that deer? Where's the deer? Gemma, look, look right here. Look right here, look. Yeah. Oh, she found it. <laughs> there you go, Gemma. You got that deer? Did you find that deer? Hmm? Did you find it? Good girl, Gemma. You got the deer. You got it, Gemma. Good tracking, girl. Good tracking. You got it. You found that deer, Gemma. Good girl. Good girl. You're a big, mean dog. You know that. You're tough and ferocious, aren't you? Yeah. You tell everybody it was my fault because I hid that deer up off the ground, didn't I? I didn't want the other farmers to get it. I knew I was leaving it all day. Yeah. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah. She got it. That's her prize right there, isn't it? Look at her. She's biting the rope now. She's like, hey, quit trying to take my deer away. I worked hard for this one. Good job, Gemma. All in all, you can't complain about that one. So we started the buggies probably 150 yards across this field. Went up maybe... 100, 150 yards through the timber, made a big loop, come down the hill, across the field. She tracked it all the way to within 20 feet of the deer, of the what she was tracking. Now, I don't know why she blew past it. It may be my fault, because I had it kind of up off the ground a little ways, um, and it was probably blowing scent downwind. The wind is carrying that direction, so I'm sure when she got past it just a little ways, she was air scenting smelling it and thought it was still going that direction but i would say for her first time on a not minutes old track that's impressive uh, we've used Gemma over the years i say used we've turned her out and let her help find deer but not really she's found one or two not really any formal tracking by any means and uh, her and bella used to help us a little bit but by law technically if you're gonna be using a dog to intentionally track a deer, if we're gonna go take Gemma and go help someone else find a deer, the law says they have to be on a leash because you can't hunt deer with dogs in Oklahoma. But I will say, she tracked probably a, a 300 yard track and got us to within, what, 20 feet of the deer the first yeah. time. It's that, pretty impressive. Yeah, it is. And that deer has been dead longer than most tracking would, that you would probably. So that deer's probably lost a bunch of its scent, so. Yeah, that's true. That, it's been, it's really several good. days old, but the track I, I brought out here at, I drug it at 12 o'clock and it's 440 right now. So how long do you think it took her to track that thing? Maybe 10 minutes? Probably 10, 15 minutes, probably. That's pretty awesome. So as you can see, uh, the miniature dachshund breed and Gemma specifically, have an incredible prey drive. They want to hunt. That's what they were born and bred to do. So, working on some, I'm not gonna say formal training with Gemma, but training her to actually do a job to track those deer is going really well. Bear has a job. His job as a livestock guardian dog probably would never make a good tracking dog because he doesn't like to get more than 100 yards from the goats. Huh, Bear? Yeah. So, anyways, that's all for today, guys. Um, I think we're going to change things up on our ending, at least for a little while, on my closing of videos. And uh, go with what old Captain Ron always said. And that was, what, Bear? What? Are you, are you doing it? Are you doing the thing? Hmm? You doing what Ron said? 
do something today to make somebody smile because you just never know. It just might change the world.